Hello, my people. Digital SAT English tips coming at you right now. I'm inside the blue book. Let's go. Tip number one. First thing you do is you click this box because this box activates eliminator mode, which is easily the coolest thing that College Board has ever done. I normally crap on College Board all the time, but they gave a really cool name to this thing. As soon as you click this button, you're going to see these little buttons appear down here for each of the questions, and you can use that button to eliminate the response, which is pretty sweet. Blue Book saves any of your eliminations, and so when you come back later for review, you're going to be able to see very quickly which options you discarded, which ones you have left, and you can make a better decision. But you'll notice that when I activate eliminator mode, it kind of scrunches up the responses here and makes it a little difficult to see, which we can solve with tip number two, zoom out the text. Okay, I think, I think I might've gone overboard. I think that's too much. That's too much, zoom back in. Very simply, if you hit control and use your mouse wheel, you can zoom in or out on the test and it'll record this setting for the entire session. So you don't have to do this every single question. Wait, you, you don't have a mouse? What are you doing? You don't have a mouse? That's tip number three. You gotta have a mouse for the test. Look at the difference between me trying to do it on my laptop with a touchpad working as hard as I possibly can versus me using a mouse. Now multiply that savings over the course of 54 questions on English and you can see how you would save a lot of time using a mouse. Seriously, mouse, you gotta have one. Bring it on test day. You are allowed to bring a mouse with your laptop on test day, so make sure you do. Now that time that you're gonna save with your mouse is gonna pay off later because if you're doing tip number four, marking answers for review, then it's gonna be a lot easier for you when you get to tip number five, which is to actually use the review page. So let's go over both of these things. When you click this button, you mark a question for review. And when you do that and you get to the end of the module, you'll be presented with a wonderful review page. And the review page has all of the questions from the module. In blue are the ones that you answered, white are the ones that you didn't answer, and the ones that have a little red logo like the review button are the ones you need to go back to review. So you definitely want to use this review page because it's going to give you time to go back and check your answers or resolve any of those questions that maybe you weren't too sure about. When you use the review page and then you click on a question, it's going to send you back to the middle of the test. So how do you get back to the review page quickly? Easy. Use this right here. There's a little thing at the bottom of the screen that tells you that you can click it and go back to the review page. And when you do that, you're going to be able to go back to the review page, back to your questions, back to the review page, back to your questions. All you got to do is use that thing right there. Perfect. Practice going to the review page and then going back to a question and then going back to a review page and going back to a question. That's how you're going to get faster at this test. You won't have time to use the review page if you don't apply tip number six, which is to use no more than one minute per question. Even though the test technically gives you one minute and 11 seconds per question, if you use all that time, you're never going to have time to review. And truthfully, some of these questions are so quick and short that you should be answering them very quickly so that you have a little more time for some of the harder questions. So limit yourself to one minute per question max, and that will give you a total of five minutes for you to use for review. How do you know if you have enough time on the test? Well, you will know if you apply tip number seven, which is to leave the timer up. The timer is at the top of the screen and there is an option to hide the timer, but I seriously do not recommend you do that. You need to pay attention to your time on the test. And what's more, when you're down to the last few minutes of the test, the timer opens by itself and you cannot hide it and it turns red and it gets very scary. So like you might as well get used to having the timer above your head anyway. So when you have the timer up, there's an easy way for you to tell if you have enough time on the test. The number of minutes left on the timer should be greater than the number of questions left down here. So if you're on question five of 27, that means you have 22 questions left. You should at least have 22 minutes up here. A great way to make sure you don't waste a bunch of your time is to apply tip number eight, which is to ignore these annotation tools, okay? You can click this for annotations, and all of a sudden you will see all over the bottom of the screen are options for you to like write notes and you can highlight text and this is just a giant waste of your time on the new digital SAT. This might have made sense on the older version of the test when like, you know, you had long texts and it would make some sense to take some notes. But now that it's like just this simple format of one paragraph, one question, like if you're doing this 
then you're really not practicing enough because you need to learn your paragraph reading strategies. Identify a topic sentence, scan and skim the text for keywords, and try to figure out the main idea without reading every word. Read just what you need. You probably don't have to read the whole paragraph for a lot of the different questions. In fact, for some kinds of questions like the note taking questions, you don't even really need to read the paragraphs or the notes at all. Tip number nine is very simple. Update the app. Make sure that you open Blue Book regularly and definitely make sure that you open it before you take your test. If you don't, you will find that Blue Book may need an update. And there's nothing worse than getting to your test center on test day, opening your laptop, and then finding out that you need to update the stupid app. Uh, that would make you very uncomfortable, very stressed, and in general, it's just not the situation you want. You wanna arrive to the test center ready to go. So make sure you update your app, open it frequently, especially before test day. Make sure that you open this thing because College Board typically pushes out updates right before the test. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you open it up like Friday night, maybe even Saturday morning, just to double check really early. When you update the app, you may not be able to get into your account. I actually had this problem and so did one of my students in our group class, uh, Aranza. Fortunately, Aranza's smarter than me, so she was able to figure out the solution. All you gotta do is just, when you go to the login screen, say, no, this isn't me, and then it'll log you out, and then you can go back to your original account and you should be able to get in and that worked for me, so just keep that in mind. If you update the app and you're not able to get in, that's the easy fix. Unfortunately, there is no easy fix for the fact that we don't have a lot of SAT material, but that does bring me to tip number 10, which is use my material, guys. I have put together a folder full of SAT materials and recordings from my last group class so that you can get the information you need to get a better score on this test. Right now, there is a shortage of material. You have the four practice tests from College Board and Khan Academy, and that's basically it. And there's a lot of people out there saying things like, oh, just, you know, go ahead and use the old material from the old English portion. That's bad advice, and, and I really don't recommend it because if you use those old materials, the question styles are different, the reading texts are completely different, and even little things like in the writing portion of the old test, they had questions where you could just say no change. That's not an option anymore. Like you, that will teach you to look at the blank first instead of looking at your question and your options. And I encourage you to look at the question first so that you can understand the strategy. And like this advice to use old material is just wrong. Unfortunately, we're stuck trying to figure out what to do with this new version of the test. I am making new material and uploading it into this folder every week. Use the stuff that we are making for you, okay? It's gonna work, it's gonna help you. I can already tell a lot of people have reached out to say thank you for this material and left a lot of great positive comments. And I really thank you people for the encouragement. You motivate me and fill me with inspiration and make me wanna make more stuff for you guys. And so that's what we're doing here today. I wanted to make this video to help more people with the Blue Book experience because I realized that there's a lot of uncertainty right now. There's a lot of things we don't know, but we can learn to dominate this app and really just make it so that you feel one with the app, like me right now. I'm inside the app. It's pretty great, you know? I'm in here and I know what to do, and that means I have more time to answer the questions correctly. Anyway, people, that is my 10 Blue Book tips to help you dominate the SAT. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.